One of the quickest and easiest ways you can upgrade a computer from being a really slow, snail paced style computer to a fairly okay, decent computer is this. You can upgrade your old school hard drive, mechanical hard drive, to a SSD. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is my 2011 MacBook Mini. I got this back in 2011. It has a mechanical drive inside, which I think is a 5400 uh, RPM, 500 gigabyte drive. A lot of storage space, but not an exactly a fast drive. So we are going to take out the drive out of this and upgrade it with a Kingston SSD 240 gigabyte SSD hard drive. Now, a lot of people are kind of worried or they kind of get scared or thinking like changing a hard drive is actually really difficult. It may be a little more difficult with a Mac because they have proprietary hardware inside that not your basic you know pc that you do that you can custom build uh macs are not really geared towards having a really good upgrade path but you can swap out a hard drive on a mac mini if you have the patience so what we're going to do we're going to reference iFixit. it's not a paid uh, not a paid sponsorship it's just i fix it uh, to give them a shout out it's a great online community that you can go through to look for pretty much any type of device you want to see how to either take apart or replace excellent build guides and excellent tear downs to show you what you're basically dealing with but first to kind of kind of compare and contrast of the actual performance we're going to gain what i'm going to do i'm going to test the mac mini i'm going to time the boot time on it and see how long it takes on the current mechanical hard drive and then do the same test on the SSD. See what happens. All right, timing to see how long it boots. When I get the splash logo to sign in, that's when I'll stop the timer. Okay, here we go. We'll call that about two minutes. That's a long time. As one thing I forgot to mention, the boot time that I'm going to do basically when I finish this swapping out this uh, SSD, it's not gonna be a true apples to apples comparison only because I'm not migrating my old information to this new hard drive. So it's not gonna be exactly the same. Um, I can tell you when this was fresh brand new, it still took about a minute and a half to load. Uh, you saw right there, it took about two minutes. That's a pretty long time for anything to wait to boot up. Um, I'm going to do a brand new clean installation of the latest Mac operating system. And this is basically gonna be my media center. So I'm gonna do the test on an SSD with a brand new operating system from scratch. But you'll see the world of difference once everything gets done. The other thing I forgot to mention is that I am doing this raw. I have never swapped out an actual hard drive in an Apple product, so this is a first for me. I just want to do this to prove exactly that anybody can actually do this. I do have experience swapping out computer hardware itself. Mac, not so much. This is my first. So, one stuff that you need to actually get this done. One, you'll need uh, a basic multi-bit screwdriver. Specifically, you need these with a little kind of hexadecimal style drill, or not drill bits, but like little uh, bits themselves. Specifically, you need a T6 and a T8. Also, do me your favor and get yourself one of these. This is a magnetic bowl. Uh, so for specific screws, like, you know, things so you don't really lose, since they're really small, you know, if they get knocked around or something, then I won't know what that screw is anymore. It'll, it'll stick there. It'll stick to the magnet, and you won't lose it. So, good investment to have. I kind of already started taking this apart and not realized that my camera wasn't recording. Uh, for the most part, I'm just kind of going to speed through this. So uh, future James, who's editing this, will take you through a little narrative. And uh, so be prepared for a nice calm voice right now and take it. Thank you, past James. Okay, guys, we we're first going to pop off the bottom of this sucker so we can see the inner workings. And like past James said, my camera died during the first five minutes of this project. So I'm just going to do a quick recap. 
Again, everything that I do in this video can be referenced on iFixit, which I use a lot myself during this project. First, we need to take off the fan. The fan has three screws located here. You will need a T6 bit to remove the screws. Once loose, just lift up, being super careful not to damage the fan connector pins connected to the logic board. And don't be dumb like me and use the tip of your screwdriver to pop off the connector. I ended up breaking the plastic off the corner of the connector, which should not be a huge deal, but save yourself some trouble and know that the connector pulls off and snaps back in place. It does not insert into place. Now I already took the ram out, which is very easy. Just pop the metal edges on the side and they will pop up and just pull them out. Next is the Wi-Fi antenna. Four screws keep this in place. Once removed, we should be able to see the hard drive underneath. We'll grab a T8 bit and remove the four screws holding it in place. Then just lift up with a slight bit of force and it should pop right off. Now I fixed it recommended disconnecting the antenna, but I feel that's not needed. Save yourself the trouble and go ahead and leave it connected, but out of the way like so. Now they didn't really explain in the guide on how to remove the hard drive. If you look closely, there are no screws holding it in place. At a glance, all you can see is the hard drive connected to the SATA connector. First instincts, is to try to pull it down off the connector, but there is not enough clearance. Then I realized the hard drive is just sitting inside loose. The whole hard drive lifts up at an angle and just pops right out. It's a basic two and a half inch hard drive with a black sleeve on it. One mistake I made while admiring it was not seen with the SATA cable disconnected from the larger board. What I pointed to on camera was not even close. This is where I fix it as a lifesaver. Okay, now time to swap the hard drive out. First, take a T8 bit and remove the two screws on the one side of the hard drive. They're more like placeholders to keep your hard drive straight when placed back inside the Mac Mini. Then carefully remove the plastic sleeve covering the hard drive. If you do it slowly, you should be able to save enough adhesive to stick this plastic sleeve on your new hard drive. Then just pull off the SATA connector. Take your new solid state hard drive, connect the SATA connector, and work that plastic sleeve to stick to the drive. Then you're just repeating your step backwards. Attach the screws back to the top side of the hard drive. Don't drop the screws like me.
and watch as I fail the first time trying to put this back in place. Which is why we read instructions before starting the project. Because if I would have, then I realized that the SATA connector is under this plastic piece that I needed to remove first. One T6 screw holds this in place. Remove the screw and try not to be embarrassed from the first hard drive fail. But hey, no one's perfect, right? Once you corrected your mistake, connect the SATA connector back to the logic board and put your hard drive in place. Put back that plastic piece you just removed. It can be a little tricky, but just be patient and you'll get it. Next, we need to place the Wi-Fi antenna back using the four screws that you hopefully did not lose. Next, we'll install the RAM. They go in at a slight angle, then push down to secure. Then the last piece of the puzzle of the van which I'm most worried about with that piece I broke off. It connects the same way the SATA cable connects. You push down on the connector to the logic board. I did this off camera due to my situation. I had to get some needle nose pliers and carefully put each pin back in place. Please learn from my mistakes and do not do what I did. Once connected, screw in the three screws to secure this back to the logic board. Next, plug that sucker in and pray to all that is holy that the fan spins when you power it on. Success! Take a big sigh of relief, wipe the sweat off your forehead, place that cover back on your mag using the dot as your indicator to place the cover. Congrats, you're done. Okay, so now my Mac is in its final resting point. So now I have it set up in my entertainment center going on here. This is, like I said, it's gonna be my media center. So everything is all swapped out. We're gonna power it on, gonna do the same test itself to see how long this boot takes. And my TV is right over yonder. Yonder, who says yonder? And we're gonna time the boot. And it's gonna be kind of difficult at the same time to launch this while recording. But here we go. Give or take about a second or so. So the same test. There's the Apple logo. So as I forgot to hit, I instead I hit the stop button on my camera instead of hitting the stop button on my watch. So give or take, that was about 36 seconds versus the two minutes that was prior. So not bad at all. So we improved it by a whole minute and 
almost minute and a half practically than I was before. So see guys, just by doing that little upgrade, the little tech upgrade, you're able to get a lot faster and better experience uh, with this than having to buy a brand new Mac, you know, Mac mini or just a new computer. You know, there's little things you can do to actually improve the quality of your current hardware that you have by doing a little work and spending a little bit of money, not a whole lot. Anyways guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give that a thumbs up. If you like my content, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer in the best of my ability. And yeah, signing off guys. This is James from Iron Tech. I'll be catching the next one. Take care.